Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night. OCC, God bless you. Thank you for being here. We're going to worship the Lord tonight. Is anybody glad about that? Amen. Yeah. Say it with me. Say, the Lord. Lord. He is good. He is. And His mercy endures forever. Amen. Dearly, Father, Lord, we just love you and we thank you. Yes. We, we set our eyes on you right now, Lord Jesus. We worship you no matter what's going on in this world right now. We, we set our focus on you right now. And, and Lord, we just want to pay straight attention to you. Yes. Father, Lord, we just love you for all the things that you've done, all that you're doing right now, all the things that you're going to do. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and that you are here. Every time we worship, you, you just come. And we just thank you, Lord, for that promise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Good stuff. 
praise worship singers and musicians. Thank you, Lord, for not tripping from Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy says it's trapped in time, but people of God just walk right through it. Amen. And uh, if, if God has to heal, I'm going to play. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. God's good, isn't it? Amen. What about this? This one's in there. Everybody just take a break. Let all that stuff out on the way. The Lord's trying to put on me the last few days. And relax. You're in the house of God. Bless the rest. Amen. God's going to give you rest and peace and speak to your spirit tonight. I mean, all that's what we do when we come to the house of God. We've got a spirit man to you. Amen. Amen. And we're spirit, soul, and body. And so, therefore, when we come here, our spirit man, baby, which is what we really are, we are a spirit like God. God created us up for His image. Amen. Amen. When we take our spirit, it can't help but affect our soul realm, our mind, will, and emotions, and our, our physical bodies. Amen. So, just explain that tonight and say, I receive the feeding of the Spirit of God tonight. Therefore, I also receive peace of mind and ministry of the soul realm. And I experience and I receive by faith strength in my body, every part of my body, in Jesus' name. It's coming in line with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Do you receive it by faith tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. Amen. Well, we're going to give you a chance to give tonight, and we're going to give right to uh, the message of God's put on my heart, so I'm going to give you a chance to uh, do that tonight. So uh, when you usher some more up here, we're going to give a chance to give. Thank you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. And giving. Hallelujah. Everybody say this. Say God's word works in every part. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we just thank you for faithfulness. We thank you for the faithful people of God. Thank you for those in are uh, Just believe the word of God and act on it. So we thank you for what you're about to do, what you're about to plant in the kingdom of God tonight. So would you just take your gift, your offering in your hand, and uh, let's speak a blessed over as we plant that seed that the Lord has given us tonight. Let's just speak this over and say, in the name of Jesus, I take this seed by faith in my hand. I plant it tonight in the house of God. And I thank you, Lord, that as it goes forth and it is planted in your kingdom, that it will bring forth a mighty harvest. We believe, Lord, that as a part of this seed, it will bring a harvest of souls. It will bring a harvest of revival. It will bring a harvest of healing. It will reach even beyond this house to houses, churches, touch people throughout all the land and throughout the world. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the seed. So I proclaim the blessing of God. You have proclaimed over this that I give. In Jesus' name, I plan it, Lord. House of God, and the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, for the result of blessing in this house, the kingdom, and my house. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. How we God bless you. Come on and give us the Lord the least to him and I thank you. How are you? Praise God.
first worship testimony or blessings. Amen. Hey, if anybody got this as a family testimony, you want to give it tonight? Something good that God's done for you? I have a thing. Good to hear, brother. Amen. Take the microphone so we can hear you. Share what God's done. Well, you know, uh, since January, we've been going through a lot of changes. And I'll tell you, it's been a lot of ups and downs. And, uh, I didn't know how I was going to act on it coming off the road. Yeah. You know, because whether you like it or not, man, you need a different life on there. You know, it, it, not bad. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And uh, it's been good. Man, you talk about blessings. I mean, it is, it is just been good. And, uh, and it's, it's just it's been really good around my house, man. And I think that is uh, through a whole lot of prayer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it's been very humbling. I've had to learn how to keep my mouth shut. And, uh, <laughs> I got a, kind of a big mouth, so I've had to take a look at it. And uh, so, yeah, it's been good. It's been really good. Hey, that's something to thank God for. Somebody say, hallelujah. You know, you know uh, God, when our heart is right, shifts like that. Come easy, don't you? And uh, Drew, I'll tell you, if you didn't have a love for home, that yeah. would not be an easy thing. But you do. And you have a home for your house, and then you have a love for this house. And so God made that transition yeah. easier for you. Praise Hallelujah. God. Anybody else got something you want to praise God for before I preach the word tonight? Anybody? Glory to God. Well, if I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is faithful. Amen. You ready to go to the word? Hallelujah. Well, grab your Bibles with me, and uh, let's go over to Matthew chapter 6 tonight. Matthew chapter 6. I just thank God for his faithfulness. He always knows what we need. Amen. Amen. When we need it. I trust the Holy Spirit of God that he's Hallelujah. directed uh, this tonight, uh, that, uh, you know, that it is just what every one of us needs. Amen. Yeah. And uh, didn't have any week-long intentions or even day-long intentions of preaching this just when I got in, in, the, in with the Lord today and seeking Him and praying and, and uh, just being led by the Spirit and, and He rose this up and so I believe it's a timely uh, thing for somebody and I believe those somebody's are all of us that are sitting there. I trust the Holy Spirit that much. And it may mean one thing to, to you, it may be one thing to somebody else, but uh, God is so good by His Spirit. I, he communicates to every one of us. And, uh, you know, uh, we just say it again. I've said it many times. That's why, you know, uh, we're special, but we're not special. Amen? Uh, God it, God doesn't love anybody more than He loves somebody else, but we're all God's favorites. I don't know how He does it, but He does it. Amen? So thank God for that. I'm trusting this will minister to you tonight. So turn to Matthew chapter 6. Let's stand. We're going to read verses 25 through 34. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll remember the story of the Lord God here. And, and uh, so I just uh, love this. Let's, uh, let's read it here. Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Jesus speaking here says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than me? And the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Let me just let me just uh, bring that down to today's terms. Don't worry. Amen? Amen. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which, is, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more call you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things, the Gentiles, or in other words, those that are outside of God, see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
And all these things shall be added unto you. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. How many of y'all would echo that and just say, yeah, I've had enough to deal with today. I think I'll wait and tackle tomorrow's issues tomorrow. Amen. God knows how these things working. And uh, so I'm going to tell you, he gives you grace and take one day at a time. God's help still be there for us tomorrow, just like it was today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word tonight. Thank you that your word is true. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God, you just quicken us to our spirit, man. God, as we uh, hear the word of God, I pray that God, you just penetrate every one of our hearts and lives. Lord, I don't know where everybody's life is. I, I, don't, I don't know. But Father, even though I know, know our people well, and God, we have a relationship, I thank you that God, only you know what's the intricate thoughts of their heart and the intents of their life. So, Father, I pray that you touch the deepest parts tonight. I pray, Father, if there's anyone in any kind of fear or worry tonight about anything, doesn't have to be this season we're in, but God, I mean about anything. I pray in Jesus' name that you give them complete, perfect peace. They walk out of here tonight knowing that, God, you got this, and the Lord, you're with us. We just thank you for that. We praise you for it, and we we'll lean upon you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say it. Amen, amen. You be seated. How we thank you for being in church tonight. Thank you for making a good decision to uh, feed on the Lord and get your spirit man fed. I want to share a title with you. I want to share a few minutes with you tonight. And this is the title tonight When Your Supply Falls Short. Amen? amen. And we all know we're living in a time where there's a lot of threats of that going on. Amen? A lot of threats. You go to the store and you see the panic. Amen? Charges of toilet paper. Now people grabbing meat off the shelf. I mean, one thing or another, and a lot of that is not because of the actual results, it's because of the panic. Amen? And so uh, we need to just be settled and know that who our source is, once again, be reminded that God is our source. Man is not. And I don't care what situation the world uh, gets in. Uh, Y'all, we knew, we, we're not blindsided by this. Do we not know the word of God? And every scripture we read in First Thessalonians a little bit lets us know, hey, the, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Amen? So we know these things are going to happen, but it does not shake or change God's plan and his promise to the people of God. Amen? He's going to take care of his family. He always has. He always will. If you're glad about that, say amen. amen. But we as Christians, you know, we still have to live. We're still in this world. We're not of this world. So we just have to know how do we approach this? You know, how do we how do we do things? And continue in faith, continue in, in going forward. And, and when the supply seems like it's it's not going to last, what do we do? So hopefully we can shed some light on that by the word of God tonight and uh, let you be we just uh, built up in the Lord and know how to attack this thing. But I want to tell you first of all, worry accomplishes nothing. Amen. Right. Worry is faith in the wrong direction. Yeah, right. Amen. I uh, said like this one time, you know, the definition of faith in the Word of God, the best definition I can find, is that, uh, you know, uh, 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 faith is uh, 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 the evidence of things hoped for, or, or, or yeah, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, you know that the, uh, uh, the definition of fear is the same, which is a little bit changed. It's the, uh, the evidence of things uh, fear will happen. And the, uh, the substance of things fear have the evidence of things not seen. So it's all about where we're putting our faith. And you can talk yourself into disaster. And we all know it. Because if you're looking for it uh, to come, uh, you can give birth to that thing. Amen? And so, uh, man, we don't need to give the enemy any space in our life. We need to stand upon the Word of God, believe God, bring the best. And whatever comes our way, we've got the, the ammunition to defeat any weapon that the enemy sends our way. And we're victorious in Jesus' name. Is anybody living tonight? So look at verse 34. Let's just drive down that, that point tonight that worry doesn't accomplish anything. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought. For the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen? Hallelujah. There's nothing going on today. Let's deal with more and more. Now, that doesn't mean you don't use wisdom. I mean, I don't know. you got to use wisdom and plan for the future. God tells you that. The Bible says that, that the, uh, the righteous leave a good heritage for their children. I mean, we're not talking about eliminating every plan for the future. But y'all know where I'm coming from tonight. We're talking about don't let fear grip your heart about what's coming tomorrow. How many times 
Uh, am I the only one that may have had situations in my life that just uh, just pulverized me emotionally and I dreaded it? And when all was said and done, <laughs> it didn't amount to the hill things. Have you, ever, have you ever had that happen? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I've had that so many times in my life, but it's a trap of the enemy. So let's trust God. He's promised to bring us through. He's going to bring us through. Amen. Amen. Maybe, you know, you may have somebody walk with you. Man, we're here closing the plant tomorrow. We better start looking for a job. And that might be some lowest level of employee that just heard somebody uh, say something in the employee lounge. Yeah. And then you go over your front, oh, well, what are we going to do? You know? And come to find out that was nothing more than just a, a lie of the enemy that just got spit out in the story. You don't know. And guess what? God, you saw us anyway. Amen. So trust the Lord, amen? amen. Everything's going to be all right. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them, hey, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. For the people of God, God's still in control, amen? Thank you, Jesus. So worry, worry on God is nothing. Look at verse 25, amen? Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life more than the meat, the body more than raiment. I ate it today. Everybody ate today? Has shattered, we're blessed in the United States of America. You know, God said he'd take care of us. Amen. You know, I think it's so neat when you just come here and start talking about the, the fowls of the air, how God take care of them. You know, here it's, it's that season. We got a little wren that built a nest up on our porch. And uh, we can see it. We go the blinds and the kids have got a kick out of watching it. Watching the She's already uh, hatched one, one set of, of uh, uh, chicks, I guess you'd call them little baby birds. And, and they grew up and they flew off. And I guess she's working on another set. Now, normally I knock these down. And, and normally I don't even have to because they usually are not smart enough. They'll build them right over where one of my front porch posts is. And the cats climb up there and have a heyday with it. But this one was smart. She was smart. She built it over in the corner where they couldn't get to it. And, and, but we watched it, that bird and, and what's been entertaining. But it's amazing that every time I look at that bird, I don't see any worry in her face at all. <laughs> and she'll just fly off, look for a worm or something, you know, and, and swoop down, grab it, go over to the, to the little bird bath we got, and have a drink of water. And when those little baby birds were there, she'd come out and we'd watch them. She, it was gross. She'd feed them a little something, and then they'd spit something out, and she'd take it. It was, it was hard. But, anyway, <laughs> you know, but I, I never saw one morning where I looked up, and the bird was just sweating, thinking, oh, my God, where's our food coming from? Not built that way. Amen. Because they know God's going to provide. Amen? I think buzzards get a bad rap sometimes. Uh, yeah, they're just doing what God's on the to do. You know? Amen? They just sit on, sit on the fence post all day waiting for God to provide. And for old truth, come whizzing by when you're running late, don't they? Amen? And leave them something good. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, let me tell you, if the birds, if the birds can trust God, Y'all, we hope they would trust him. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. God's got you covered. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, and I love this. I found this quote about worry. I thought it was so good. Well, tell me this is not the truth. Worry is the dark room where negatives are developed into glossy prints. It'll develop into something. Amen. If you stay enough time in the dark room. Amen. And get, keep worry alive and you bathe it, amen. It will develop into an imprint in your life. Don't even go there in Jesus' name. Jesus is light, amen. Stay in the light, stay in faith, amen. So uh, tell worry goodbye. Everybody say worry goodbye in Jesus' name. I trust you, Lord. Now look over Matthew chapter 14. And uh, well, I love this story, one of my favorite stories in the Word. And, and uh, I think it's so neat. There's so much in there. Hardest preached for years and years, and you can never uh, get all the stuff in the story out because there's so much here that, that Jesus was doing and just just one act He did here. And I want you to look at Matthew chapter 14 and start with verse 14 here, and it says, "And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them and healed their sick." And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, and they, that they may go into the villages 
and buy themselves victuals. How many of y'all know it's never a good decision to start telling Jesus what to do? <laughs> it never works out the way we think it does. Amen? Hallelujah. But Jesus. Everybody say, but Jesus. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give you them to eat. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. Now, in some other, other of the Gospels, it tells us that a lad had brought uh, uh, five loaves and two fishes in a little basket, you know, for lunch. And, and he came. And so, so they said, this is all we got. In another Gospel, it says, Jesus said, what do you have? How I many of y'all know Jesus is always turning to us to say, what do you have? Amen? When we say we can't do something, he says, oh, well, what do you have? And so, well, and we're, our reply is usually like the disciples, we ain't got enough. This is all we got. What's this among so many? Amen? Well, those of y'all told that to God a lot past the church for 20 years. Amen? God, we can't do this. You know, how can we do this? And God said, if you just let, let me handle this, don't get all ground up yet. Amen? There's a plan here. Amen? To so read over. And they say, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. Hallelujah. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men Beside the women and children. Boy, I'm going to tell you, I've heard that story since I was a little kid, and it still blows my mind. Amen? Jesus can take a little of nothing, and it's in his hands exploded into something gigantic. I'll be glad that we serve with Jesus like that. Amen? But I want you to, want you to see what, what they did. When, when Jesus said, what, what do you have? What did the disciples do? They counted what they had. Peter, what's that? Andrew, I think it was, said, said, Andrew said, I found something here. He said, what do you have? He started, one, two, three, four, oh, no, that's five. Five, five loaves and there's, there's a couple of fish. Yeah, there's two fishes. Five loaves and two fish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They counted seven. But they shouldn't have stopped at seven. Because the other loaves were standing right beside Jesus. The bread of life. Would somebody say hallelujah? Let me tell you, I don't care what your supply looks like in the natural. When the need is there and Jesus is with you, and Jesus is saying you can do this, then you got to remember that Jesus makes up the difference because he is the bread of life. And how many of y'all know that bread can feed a multitude? Hallelujah. And give you leftovers. Leftovers. You know, I heard, uh, I heard Jim Franklin preaching uh, uh, about on this story recently, and he, he said something about the creation. He said, he said, you know, they took up 12 baskets. He said, the only basket we heard of in the story was from the little boy. He said, I wonder if there would been a bunch of people that brought their lunch, but you know how fish and bread get all soggy in there together. Maybe they just stood on the side, but that little boy's mama, he may have told, she may have told him, no, whatever you do, you don't throw that lunch away. You don't waste that. You keep that and you eat that because you need you need to eat that. You know, we don't know, but I'm saying I thought that was a great thought when I heard that. And uh, but that you know that, that one basket of this little boy's food could be put in the hand of Jesus, the bread of life, and now it's expanded and it has supplied the need of thousands of people. I don't even know how many. It's just a, a guess to how many women and children were there. I mean, it's thousands of people. When you think about it, you know, it could be 10,000 people that Jesus actually fed and still had leftovers. Why 12? I always thought it was because the man, every one of the disciples got to take evidence of that miracle right in their hand with them. And I thought it was interesting. Jesus said in the of he said, pick it up, pick up the fragments that none be wasted. When God blesses you, how many of y'all know we need, to, we need to use every fragment that he gives us? Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm telling you, to the disciples, they were like, they were like, Lord, look, we we don't have enough to feed this people. You need, this is told, you need to tell them they need to go into town and get supper for themselves. <laughs> Amen. We ain't got, we're in a desert place here. We can't feed these people. One of them said, we only got so much money and that ain't enough to feed 
weekly. You know, we got we got five dollars and fifty cents and, and one water burger for that. You know, I mean, I mean, come on, Jesus. But we thank God who was standing beside them. Amen. When the supply ran short, they forgot that they had the supplier there. God is the supplier of all of our needs. Would somebody say hallelujah? And I don't care what your job tells you. I don't care what your checkbook tells you. I don't care. In this season that we may get some threats coming, don't be staggered. Don't be staggered. Don't stagger at the promises of God, the Word of God tells us. But stand strong on the promises of God, and He will bring you through. Hallelujah. And when the supply seems short, Jesus is the bread of life. He will make up the difference. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should have counted eight. Amen. And you said this one. You can count on Jesus. Amen. Count him in every situation where there is lack. Amen. And don't forget who's standing there with you. Amen. Now there's some things. If, if the threat of a lack of supply shows up, there's a few things more laid upon my heart to share with you tonight that we need to do. Because we always need to know what action to take. Amen. When the threat comes. And, and you know, when the enemy comes, and you know it's a, you know it's a threat because why? The fear. The fear will try to grip your heart. Just because the temptation of fear comes does not mean we're in sin. Amen. But the fear tries to grip your heart, and you have to know what to do with it. Amen. So what's the first thing we need to do? I believe the first thing we need to do is to pray. How many of y'all believe that's always the best thing to do? Talk to God about it. First and foremost, if there's a concern of your heart, the Bible says He perfects those things which concern us. A lot of times we, we're carrying it, we're thinking, oh, God, God just reading our mind, and he does what everything is going on, your thought process, and everything. But you know, it's his, he set up the process of how we're supposed to deal with it. And the process he set up was ask. You have not because you ask not. So ask, there's, there's been some things in my life I was fretting over before, and I knew God was aware of it. And then I got to think about it and thought, man, I hadn't even really asked you yet. Have y'all ever done that before? Amen. And so I saw that God, I just ask you in Jesus' name right now, Father, this is my need. I ask you to supply this need according to your word, and, and then I release it. It's amazing how, how fast the peace comes over something like that. And it's amazing how fast the answers come. Let me really dumb it down to a simple thing that I do all the time. Working on the fence. Somebody call all right. And for the next 15 minutes, I'm looking for my hand. Yes. Uh, you know, I've ever been there. And, and I'm stressing. I was like, what did I do with it? Oh, my goodness. Go over there with your keys. Amen. Take it over your today. All right. But, but you're, you're, you're looking for something you lost. And then I'm stressing. Oh, God, I'm backtracking for a time. I'm going to find it. I can do this. I can do this. And then I, I can't find it nowhere. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, God, you know exactly where the hammer is. Right. So, Lord, would you open my eyes? Lord, I'm telling y'all, it's, it's, it, for me, it's been almost unbelievable how that works. Yes. Because you stop and pray about it, it's like almost a minute. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of almost every time I've done that. Immediately, my eyes get open to where I left that thing. And God will either spark my memory of, oh, I was doing this with it last. And I'll go back to there. Or sometimes I say, it's hanging on your pocket. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you got bless my mother-in-law. She used to fret over her glasses. Hey, where's my glasses? Throw another on your head. You know? <laughs> yeah. We've all done that. Amen. But I want to tell you, God, we can get so frazzled about the simplest things and just lose our composure. The first thing we need to do. Everybody say the first thing. First we need to stop and pray. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for us. See, Mary, I shared the story about Jesus from the water and the wine, you know, Sunday. And Mary knew something about this because what she did, you know, it was it was really a failure of Jewish custom because the wine and what they had to drink, you know, the, the great the fruit of the vine back in those days. And, and so, you know, it was almost an insult to your guests if you ran out. 
And so it was a major deal. So what did Mary know to do? She would have told Jesus about it. Because she knew he could do something about it. She couldn't do nothing about it. She was just a guest. But she went and told Jesus. And, and y'all remember the story? And Jesus did something about it. He created something out of something else that was needed. Amen? And so take it to Jesus. Everybody say, the first thing I need to do when the supply runs short is I need to pray about it. Now the second thing we need to do is this. We need to rest and wait on Him. Amen? Because His timing is perfect. I know we're going right now, right now, right now, right now. But Jesus may not be the best benefit your life. Let it be a witness to somebody else if you get it tomorrow or next week. Amen? Amen? And it teaches us to trust in Him. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, we, we want to be people of faith, right? Amen. We all be known as people of faith. Hallelujah. Guess what faith represents? A waiting period. Amen. Amen? I don't have to have faith to believe God to provide me a full bit. It's right here. Amen? No faith is all there. I've got it. But you know, there's some other things in life you know, I'm, I'm by faith believing this place is going to be full and packed one day with hundred people, hundred yes. believers that are saved and bringing people in and we're getting people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and we're experiencing the mighty arm out of the Holy Ghost. Yes, I still believe that. Amen? And by faith I'm going to hang on that why? Because I don't see it yet. But am I going to crack mine and, and you know I'm going to pray about it? And then you know what? The results, God, is up to you and I'm trusting you to bring it back. Amen? Yes. And I still believe and we'll see it. Amen. Before my life is over, I believe this building was built this size for a purpose, and it was beyond what what the natural need was. Amen. It was what the vision was. So, in the name of Jesus, we're going to see the vision fulfilled. So, we're waiting on it right now. But we're going to wait in faith. Everybody say, "I'm resting and I'm waiting." Psalm thirty-seven seven says this: "Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him." Hallelujah. So that's the second thing we need to do, is rest and wait on the Lord. The third thing we need to do is act on it. If you're running in a short, it looks like something's in short supply, act on it. What do you do? You act, you act, you do whatever it takes, whatever Jesus tells you to do. In other words, obey the Word of God. Amen? I mean, I don't know the Word of God says on Isaiah, I don't remember exactly where it is, but it says, The willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse to rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. Amen? So we need to be willing and we need to be obedient. We need to do the Word of God. You know, uh, some people, uh, they don't understand why their life's not getting blessed when, when there's really some real visible things going on in their life that if they would get corrected and bring in line with the Word of God, that it may create some avenues of blessings. Because I believe God blesses obedience. Obedience brings a blessing. Amen? I mean, I know that to be true. Amen? Disobedience, well, that's just the Word of God. Y'all remember the Word of God says the, the gift of God, or let me say it like this, the, the, uh, uh, the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal. Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? So there's results in how we live our life. You know, there's things that people are dealing with physically uh, uh, out in the world today that's a result of their disobedience. There's things that people are enjoying today as a result of their obedience. Amen? And following the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God. So, so we get blessed and if we, we follow and obey the Word of God. So act on it. And sometimes it's a matter of loving somebody. Sometimes it's a matter of just doing what God said to do to get in line with His, his blessings. Sometimes it's an act of obedience to get the enemy out of the way. You know, it's like a mosquito landing on you. When a mosquito lands on you, do you sit there and think, I'll, I'll take care of that in a minute? Get off of there. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> 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 you didn't get done, my bud. Amen? You're getting off of there. That's how we need to treat the devil sometimes. He got no business landing in our lives. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And you have the authority. Get him off of you in Jesus' name. So when a short supply is it, trying to threaten to bite into you and suck you for what you're worth, what they can to get out of you, you just shoot off in Jesus' name. Amen? Act on it. Everybody say act on it. Hallelujah. We all know faith without works is dead. 
The fourth thing we need to do is this. We need to focus on today. Amen. Amen. Focus on today. Hallelujah. Read those couple of verses that we started with again. Uh, 32 over Matthew 6. Uh, verses 32. It says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added up to you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. In other words, deal with today. Win today. Amen? Win today. And God will give you the plan for tomorrow. Glory to God. God, if you'll take one focus on the day that you're at, God will give you help when it seems like the supply is short. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? Sometimes we eat steak. Sometimes we eat beans. A week. Amen. Sometimes you adjust some things. But God will help you and give you the plan to get through. Deal with today. Amen. Everybody say, I'm going to deal with today. The fifth thing is this. Let God be enough. Amen. Let God be enough. He makes it sufficient for us. Let him be the one we trust in. There again goes back to that uh, a scripture we spent so much time studying in 2 Chronicles. Amen. 714 says, We mentioned in prayer again now that my people should call our names and humble themselves and pray. Amen. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Said, I'll hear from heaven and I will heal their land. You know, we got we got to, to let God be enough. We've got to seek his face. Right. Amen. We gotta focus in on relationship right. with him. When we really zero down, there wouldn't be so much panic even among Christians if we really thought about, I don't want to say this right, thought about our relationship with God more than the things that we get from Him. Amen? Because I want to tell you, if we seek that first, which brings us to the next point, then all the other things are going to come as we need. Amen? So look, let's go to the next point now. Number Number uh, six is this, seek his kingdom and not his things. And that's verse 33 again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Don't y'all think that's a way to live if the supply is looking short? Amen. Glory to God. Seek him. Seek the kingdom of God first. Put God first. If you forget what to put first, then buy your Bible if you don't have one and look at the first four words in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God. Sums it up, don't it? Amen. Boy, we're going to have to get Bible study to get in Revelation. Amen. Out of four words in the Bible, we've got Revelation. Amen. Seek you first, and he'll take care of all the other stuff. I love this quote I found. I love this from a Max Lucado, a Christian author. He said this. Seek first the kingdom of wealth, and you'll worry over every dollar. Seek you first the kingdom of health, and you'll sweat every blemish or bump. Seek ye first the kingdom of popularity, and you'll receive or you'll relive every conflict. Seek ye first the kingdom of safety, and you'll jump at every crack of a twig. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and you'll find it. On that we can depend and never worry. I'm not good. Amen. So seek him. Seek his kingdom. And I want to tell you the last thing. Or actually, I got, I got two things here. Number seven and number eight. Number seven is one of the most important things. This is a, if you got whack, if you got for your supply, looks like it's going out, you got bread of losing something, this is one of the most very important things you can do. Over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, it says this, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, a spirit of thankfulness is one of the greatest and most powerful ingredients there is to overcoming any lack in our life. Yes. You find something to be thankful for. Does somebody say amen? 
Wake up in the morning. And start it right in the morning when you wake up. God, thank you. Thank you that I, that I have a, a roof over my head all night. Thank you I didn't die in sleep last night. Thank you, Lord. That, that God, we, I live in Texas. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> I'm saying I've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Thank you I got boots to put on my feet. Thank you I got a job. Thank you I got a provision for my family. Thank you for my family, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what I haven't even seen done. You can find something to thank God for. Because the enemy will try to wake you up and get you focused on what's not going right and what you don't have and where the lack of supply is. How many of y'all know if we have an attitude of gratitude? Boy, God will bring everything we need into our lives. Hallelujah. Everybody say, in everything. Everything. Give thanks. That does not say for everything. Don't got that, right? Amen. We don't thank God for this season of coronavirus and all these layoffs and everything else. No, we don't thank God for it, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to thank God in it. Amen. Amen. Because somehow he makes all things work together for good. Now, is that for everybody? Good question. No. Only the ones that love him. Amen. For those, in other words, there's some that don't apply to I'm sorry, we're not trying to cheat anybody out of what God has, but God has some selective blessings. Amen. But it's available to everybody. Yes. Amen. For God, that all things work together for good to those who are what? Who love Him and are called according to His purposes. to help and supply right there. Amen. Amen. We don't pay anything of these things. He makes all things work together for good. If we are the ones that love Him and are called according to His purposes. Hallelujah. Is your life about the purpose of God? That doesn't mean you have to be a preacher. And yet again, every one of us is preachers. Come on. Amen. We offer the Lord God in our life if we're believers. Amen. Yeah. We're, we're a witness of something. We're either good witness or bad witness. Come on. Amen. Only the good witness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say this to me. Say everything. Everything. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. For my good. For my good. Come on. I love God. I love God. And I, my life is called. My life is according to His purpose. According to His purpose. Glory to God. Most, one of the most important parts of knowing what to do when lack threatens, when, when the supply seems short, is be thankful. Amen. And the last thing, number eight, is this. Keep feeding on Jesus, the bread of life. Keep feeding on him. Jesus is what? The word that became flesh and dwelt among us. When the devil threatens life, and he puts words of short supply in your ears. Cast that out, and you put words of life and God's supply in your spiritual ears, and in our hearts. Amen? Because my God shall supply, I believe, all my need, according to His riches and glory, out by Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Aren't you glad of that tonight? I know we're living in troubled times. I know we're living in a time where the enemy is spitting out threats, and there's all every day you can hear the threat. Oh, this is going to happen because this is going to happen. Oh, this is going to happen. You know what? We know. I was going to take you over to 1 Thessalonians, but I'm not going to take time to do it. We're living in the last days. We're living in perilous times. But God has not appointed his people to wrath. God is going to supply the need. If he keeps us here, he's going to keep us where we are. He's going to feed us. He's going to supply for us. He's going to direct us. He's going to give us the jobs we need. He's going to give us the directions we need to make it through. And if it gets to the point where the Father says, go get them, son, he's going to come down and get his bride, and we're going to be with him in heaven forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. Either way, he sounds pretty good to me. Amen. Amen. We're going to build a testimony. Just say, we're going to go through stuff right now. We're going to be glorifying him in heaven for Lord, I knew when the devil tried to little curl up our stuff. And yeah, it, was, it was tough. It was tough for a lot of people. But I want to say, thank God, you brought us through. Didn't, didn't 
thing is, you are my supplier. You are God is greater than anything. That this earth, the kingdom of hell, or the devil himself can bring about. You are God's children. And if you are, he will supply your needs. And what do you do when you your short supply? You just run to the bread. Remember who's standing by. Don't go down at seven. Count Jesus. Because he is the bread of life. Would y'all stand with me now? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, God. We just appeal upon you tonight, God. We just thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight. We thank you that, Father God, you, that, Lord, in this life, the future seems uncertain. God, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But, Father, I know this. Whatever it holds, you're going to be there with us. Hallelujah. And you're going to bring us through. If we need feeding you with this, we need directing you with grace. If we need protection, you can protect us. And we, if we stay where we need to be, Father, then, Lord, you're going to bring us into all that you have for us. And we give you glory and we give you thanks for it tonight. And Father, I pray for everybody, Father God, to stand before me tonight. I thank you for those who come to the house, God. I thank you for those who online that took time to listen to this online broadcast. I thank you, Lord, for those that are, that are viewing that. I pray that wherever the Word of God is going right now at this time, I pray, Lord, that God would be encouraged to know, Father God, and recognize that, God, if you're on our side, and if we make you, Jesus, the Lord of our life, if we're doing our best to live for you, Lord, that you're on our side and you're going to see us through no matter what. So we give you glory. We give you praise. We can be confident going forward. And we believe, God, that there will be a season of blessing coming to your people for a great and mighty move of God in these last days. And we give you thanks for it. We give you praise. Now, Father, that is not to say, God, that these times are not tough. And full of threats. And so our compassions are not turned off. Jesus, you did that whole miracle for those people when you fed them with the loaves and the fish. And it said, because you were moved with compassion on them. So, Lord, we're not in lack of compassion for those who have been hit hard. And we don't belittle the fact that those that have lost work or finances or even been hit physically. So, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that just as you supply the impossible need, of feeding that multitude. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we agree that you supply the impossible need that some feel is impossible. With you, God, all things are possible. Touch and bring the provision. Touch and bring the healing. We thank you, Jesus, you've already paid for it. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for the touch and provision that's going forth for everyone tonight. Now, Father, we just thank you, Father, also that you're here to comfort us when we're weak, when we're going through things, when we have issues of Fear or worry. And so, in the name of Jesus, we're leaning upon you for that tonight. And whatever head bowed and your eye closed, and I have to nice to do that, because I'm about to ask you a personal question. Me, just as your pastor, you're going to look and see who I'm praying for. But who tonight? And it's not an embarrassing question to answer because we've all been there. How many of you just lift your hand uh, honestly and say, you know what? I have let myself get into worry over some issues through this season, but I'm asking you, the pastor, to pray for me tonight. I'm asking you just to agree in prayer that, that I'll just apply these things. And we'll see that thing just dismissed. I'll be able to go forth with faith. I need. If there's been any worry and issues whatsoever, would you search your hand right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your honesty. God bless you. You put it down. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for the response of your children. And I thank you tonight, God. I thank you that you're touching the concerns and cares of our heart. And, Lord, I thank you right now. God, as those hands went up in honesty toward your throne. I thank you, Father God, that you're sending your hand. You're reaching your hand right back down to them in Jesus' name. And you are equipping them, God, with the word they need, the bread they need. You're equipping them with the, the uh, knowing of the sense of time of prayer. You're equipping them, God, to act on what they need to act on. Father, you're equipping them with confidence right now to go forward in faith. Father, we just resist the enemy. We rebuke every lie. And we pray in the name of Jesus that no threat of the enemy would prosper in any way. We have your word on it. And I pray that for those, particularly those who lifted their hand. And we proclaim the word of God that says, No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Yes. In Jesus' name, let it be, Father. In fact, let them prosper in this season of attack. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And we give you glory. 
Father, we thank you for any supply that seems to run short. I thank you for your supply and need. You're preparing on an abundant harvest. And I thank you for bringing it about tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I just want to pray for, you, for those that may be viewing or anybody here. I never want to take for granted anything, but if anybody needs to make a decision for the Lord, uh, let me just uh, pray a prayer with you tonight. And uh, if you're away from God in any way, if you backslid or if you never want Jesus to save you, let's just pray this together and, and pray God will just uh, uh, hear this. He will hear this. We pray this in faith tonight. So can we all just say this out loud together? Just go on us right now. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for your faithfulness and your love to me. Thank you for giving me life. I'm living a life that you gave me. Lord, I want to make sure I'm doing with it what you desire. Jesus, I recognize, I confess, you're the Son of God. And I believe you were raised from the dead. And Lord, I confess you. I believe in you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me by your blood. Come in my heart. Fresh and new. And I receive the cleansing and newness of life. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to thank you for being in church on Wednesday night. Thank you for those who viewed tonight. May God bless y'all. Don't forget Sunday morning. We'll be here at 10 o'clock. I'm just glad. I'm so glad to be back in church with God. Isn't it good to be with the family of God? May God bless you. May He make His face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you His peace. Go with the Lord and love everyone. God bless you.